All right, everyone, this project that I'm about to make, I've been thinking of for so long. It's on all of my mood boards for fall and it's finally time to make it. So today I will be making and showing you how to make a long granny square skirt. All right, so let's just run through the game plan. Okay, step number one, we're making as many granny squares as we can. And then I need to assemble the body of the skirt. Once that is done, I'm probably going to have to make a stretchy waistband so that way we can get that snatch that I love. And then I also want to add some belt loopholes around the waistband because I'm a belt girly. I love a good belt. I need to throw a belt on everything. And then I'm going to add some tassels to the end of the skirt to give it more movement. And yeah, let's get started and let's break our hands. So yeah, let's get started and let's make some granny squares. I'm just going to quickly go over how I did my granny squares. I'm not going to be teaching you how to make a granny square. If you're a novice granny square crocheter, this might not be the pattern for you, but if you're a granny square veteran, let's get this going. A lot of times with granny squares, you'll chain one and then move into your next spot. But for this, I wanted the uh, spaces in my granny square to be a lot smaller because again it's going around my butt area I don't really want to be showing off my underwear so to make the spaces in the granny square smaller I'm not chaining one and then moving into the next space each space that I'm going into I'm just directly moving on over all right I don't know where this accent came from Essentially, we're going to do three rows of different colored yarn, and then for our fifth row uh, will be our trim color. Your last row's color should be the same for every single granny square, um, but I'm really just trying to change it up and do lots of different colors for all the granny squares. I want this to look just really homemade and just like really cozy. I wound up doing four rows on my granny square. If I were you, I would make the granny squares even bigger to save you some time and some sanity. I wound up making 72 granny squares. So if you don't want to make 72 granny squares, make them a little bit bigger. Again, the most important thing is just to make sure all of your granny squares have that same trim color. And here are just some examples of all the different colors that I did. I just really wanted this to look really homey and really cozy and I wanted it to look like something that your grandma made. So that's my inspiration behind all the different colors of granny squares. Here's my little basket of granny squares when I was all done with all 72 granny squares. And here's me just laying everything out. I'm just mocking up all the granny squares, making sure that there are no duplicate colors next to each other and making sure all the colors are kind of spaced out evenly. I don't want too many purple granny squares together. I don't want too many pink granny squares together. And just laying everything out, giving everything a little measure, making sure all the measurements make sense. My skirt wound up being 32 inches in height and 34 inches in width. In granny square language, I did eight rows of granny squares lengthwise and nine rows of granny squares widthwise. Now we're moving on to seaming, which I think is most people's part of the crochet project that they don't like. So you know what I did? I turned on a comfort movie. I turned on a Harry Potter movie and I just seamed away. So if you are in the trenches of seaming, please just put on put on the office, put on a comfort show. It makes the process a little less daunting. I'm going to seam everything together lengthwise and then I'm going to seam everything together widthwise. And I am using a flat slip stitch technique for this. Make a slip knot and then you stick your hook in the corner of your granny square. We are going to be working on the inner part of the stitch. Then sticking my hook in the corner on the left granny square, and you wanna make sure your working yarn is in between, in the middle of both granny squares at all times. Then I'm just gonna yarn over and pull through all three stitches. As long as you start in the same spot on both squares, you don't really have to worry about making things match up. It will just match up automatically. So then we're gonna move up to the next stitch. Again, we're gonna stick our hook right in the center of the stitch on the right side, then the center of the stitch on the left side. And again, we're working front to back. And then we're going to pull through all three stitches that should be on our loop. And then you should have a nice flat seam. I really wanted to have a flat seam and no bulky seams because that will just add more 
bulkiness to the skirt. I don't really want a bulky skirt. I also don't like using tapestry needles to seam. I just find that it wastes yarn and just like annoys me. So this is just works the best for me. I don't have to guess how much yarn to use. So that's why I like these slip stitching methods. And when you finally get to the end of the row, you can just fasten everything off like regular. And when you wind up doing the width portion, um, don't worry about the crossover sections of granny squares. You can just kind of work your way over that. It's fine, everything will be fine. I forgot to film it because I guess I suck at this. All right, so I have completed seaming all of my granny squares together. This took me exactly two and a half Harry Potter movies to seam together. Let's not talk about the ends that I haven't weaved in yet. I'll do that later. Shh. I really don't know how this is going to fit. I definitely was cutting it close with the measurements, but honestly, I was running out of yarn and slowly running out of patience. So this is what we got. This is how big it's going to be and I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Time to try on the cylinder and see how it fits. Okay, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Cute. Okay, good. This fits so much better than I thought it would. I thought it'd be too tight. Makes the butt look good can walk in this and you can't really see my you can't see my underwear too much this feels good right it is a little bit loose up here which is exactly what I thought would happen so I'm gonna add the little waistband so I'm going to perfect the body and get rid of any hang nails weave in any ends that I need to weave in and then I'll meet you back when I get started on the waistband. And now I'm making the waistband, which is more slip stitching. So if you love slip stitching, this is the pattern for you. So for the waistband, again, I'm just going to attach my yarn like normal, and I'm going to chain up eight. I am using a smaller hook. I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook. Then I am going to just slip stitch my way down all of my chains and when I get to the bottom I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches on my granny squares so then when we turn our work I am actually going to skip over those two stitches on our granny squares so you're gonna go into the third slip stitch and you're going to just slip stitch all the way back up again. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to differentiate between the two slip stitches that you're supposed to skip and your waistband slip stitches. So just give a little count, make sure you're on the right track every once in a while. Then we're going to chain one and then I'm going to continue back loop only slip stitch. This is just a super, super stretchy, stretchy stitch. So it will give me that snatch because we are decreasing on the waistband, but it will also be super, super stretchy. So if I'm eating lunch and we got a little food baby going on, I'm still going to be intact in the skirt and we're going to have nothing ripping open at the seams. Just to go over everything one more time, we're going to make our way back loop only slip stitching down the waistband. Once we hit our granny square area, we are going to slip stitch into the next two stitches of granny square. Then we're going to turn our work. Then we are going to skip over those two stitches and go right back into our slip stitches in the waistband. Okay, okay, are we all together? And we're just gonna keep doing that till we reach the end. Also, you're probably going to hit the seams from when we were seaming the granny squares together. Don't worry about those guys. You can just skip over them or put your hook wherever it looks good. I just finished up everything. And now I'm just going to seam the two sides of my waistband together, I'm making sure I'm seaming on the wrong side of the project, which is where all of my seams are. I'm just putting both sides together. I'm just going to do that flat slip stitch seam again to make everything seamless. How many times can I say seam in a video? Okay, so now it's time for the belt loopholes. So what I did is I put on some pants and then I marked where my belt loopholes are on my pants on my body. Then I put on the skirt and then using stitch markers, 
I marked out where the belt loopholes are going to go using the guides on my body from my pants. Now it's time to make these little belt loops. I'm still using that three and a half hook that I was using from before. We're going to make a slip knot and then chain nine. Then we are just going to single crochet down the row and then we are going to just fasten everything off and I'm making sure to leave a long tail so that way I can use that when I'm attaching my belt loops. And to attach my belt loops, I just tried to weave in my ends as much as I could. Uh, things were just getting a little weird at this point and just wherever I could put my hook in to attach the belt loop is what I did. And then I just fastened everything off. No rhyme or reason, just tried my best to attach these little belt loops. All right, now I'm moving on to the tassels at the bottom of the skirt. I'm using just a book as my tassel maker and I'm going to wrap my yarn around the book three times. And then I'm using a slightly larger crochet hook to stick into the granny square wherever I want my tassel. And then I'm basically just doing a slip stitch and pulling the tassels right through the loop that's already on my hook and pulling it nice and tight. Each little clump of those three double crochets is where I try to put my tassels. Now I'm just going to town. We're just adding tassels. And honestly, I thought this would take a lot longer, but it actually didn't take that long at all. Now I'm just gonna cut the tassels to whatever length I decided. I think it was like almost four inches, a little over four and a half inches or something like that. And now that we've got the tassels on my friends, here it is. Here's the skirt. I'm gonna stop talking. I've been talking for a long time. Just enjoy. Okay, final thoughts. I think that this came out so much better than I could have even dreamed of. It hugs me in all the right places. It snatches me in all the right places. It's not too oversized to the point where like it doesn't give me any shape. And I just can't wait to wear this to a cider mill or apple picking or pumpkin picking or whatever. This is like the ultimate fall skirt and I've been wearing this around the house doing a little bit of chores and it's super comfy I'm not constantly having to readjust everything all the time but I think my little belt loopholes and my little waist section just turned out so good and if you wanted to make the skirt a little bit bigger or shorter or wider to fit you it's just super customizable and fun if you're here for all the fall crochet make sure to like this video and subscribe for all the fun random that I like to do on here. Okay, bye.